Welcome to Discerning the Drift with Addie Miller. Addie has spent years researching the influx of heresies coming into the church. She documents where Christians and Christianity have begun to hold hands with other religions such as Islam and the Catholic Church. How will all of this play in to the one world religion? How does all of this play in to Bible prophecy? Well, it's time to find out with your host, Addie Miller. It's time to discern the drift. Hello, everyone. This is Addie Miller thanking you for joining us on today's Discerning the Drift ministry program. We hope that you uh, were able to watch our pilot program. And of course, the minute that I was done with it, I thought of several things that I had left off of my list or I had forgotten to mention. So I'm going to share that with you today. And I'd like to share a few scripture verses that um, meant, have meant a lot to us through the years. And they're going to be scripture verses that most people have already heard. And I'm sure other people have, have taught these from a, a theological point of view and and uh there, it's not going to be anything new to you i'm sure but uh it, it is the scriptures that really rooted itself in our hearts and uh as we looked around and realized that uh there was this shift going on in uh christendom and even within the walls of christianity proper these scriptures really came alive to us and we know that uh they were applicable when they were first written uh, we know that they were applicable a thousand years ago and they're applicable today it's not new but for our day and time what's going on right now we feel like um this is what god has laid upon our hearts for us for us to uh to share and to really to expose and uh, uh, you have to have a little bit of a thick skin to do this because it is not something that is very uh, popular. And um, I think the Lord has prepared us all individually in our, not only in our childhoods, but our, our personal walks with him to uh, be able to handle that kind of thing. So um, let me just share with you, first of all, I'm going to share with you with some of the things that I had forgotten to mention on our previous program, and I felt like they were really important. So I'd like to do that first and foremost. And then I am going to read a few scripture verses. And then, um, you know, there may be people that are saying, well, you know, uh, who are you to, who are you to call people out, you know, and all that kind of stuff? Or, or you know, God's word says, judge not. Well, you know, you have to look at that scripture in context. Because it, that's not exactly what it means. Uh, so we're going to look at a few scripture verses and we're going to read them. Again, it's going to be scripture verses that you are very familiar with. And you're going to say, I, I know exactly what that scripture uh, speaks of and how it ministers to you and how it it, it, it helps you to, to become uh, zealous for uh, the, the contending and the defending of the faith, you know, and all of that kind of thing. So we're hoping uh, uh, that uh, discerning the drift would be a blessing to all of you. And, 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 and more than anything, really, is as a teacher, is I hope that you end each program that you take your valuable time to listen to, that you end, to end each program and you say, I learned something today. And, and that is my heart's desire as a, a just a natural teacher. That is what I wanted to do. But let me go back and I'm going to share with you just a couple of things that I forgot to mention on our previous program. So you remember when I listed, I said, you know, uh, this is what discerning the drift is all about. And this is what our desire is. And we're not, in, we're not unique because there are other ministries that are doing excellent jobs that came way before us and we're just kind of getting on the bandwagon now we're only about three years old and uh we started very very uh, uh uh gently and we started very very locally and now we're beginning to expand and we're beginning to uh uh to uh, have a, a a bigger outreach and uh you know this is our th th this was all a God thing, you know, we, we actually did not strive for any of this. The only thing that we did was we were prepared. We had, 
uh, research and investigation under our belts that knowing and just waiting on the Lord for him to providentially put us together as local like-minded believers, put it to, put us together with, with uh, uh, other like-minded believers from across the United States and even the world. And uh, all God required of us was to be prepared. And we have been and we are. So in that preparation, I mentioned on our previous program about how one of the common threads that I saw at a very, uh, um, probably about three three decades ago, I, I've been, I got saved in 85, so there's going to be 30, about 34 years that I'm saved now. So about 30 years ago, I started picking up on things. And a lot of it, I wasn't even quite sure what it was. I just knew it wasn't biblical. But I couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't give it a name. I couldn't explain it to you. So that's kind of what started me on this frenzy that is still going strong today. But one of them, one of the common threads was mysticism, which one is, which is one of my greatest concerns uh, is mysticism. Because I came out of uh, uh, the Church of Rome, which is very big on the mystical. And uh, they really promote a lot of mysticism under the banner of Romanism, of, of Catholicism, of Christianity. So I listed uh, several different religions. And I said that if a religion is not, then this is a religion within or without or outside of, of Christianity. If they are not wholly are completely 100% mystical, they will always have a mystical branch. And I named, um, uh, uh, in Christianity, it's monasticism, which comes out of the Church of Rome, comes out of Catholicism. In uh, Islam, in um, Islam is the one that I left out. In uh, Judaism, it's Kabbalah. In Buddhism, course, now we're outside of the walls of Christianity and Christendom. In, in, in uh, Judaism, Kabbalah. In Buddhism, it's Zen. In Hinduism, it's Vedanta. And I failed to mention one of the most important ones, which is Islam. And in Islam, the branch of mysticism in Islam is Sufism or Sufism. And uh, if you have even heard of um, uh, a, a group of individuals, uh, of um, a movement that is all about the whirling dervishes. They are uh, one of the most um, popular aspects of Sufism. Now, Sufis are not readily accepted within Islam. A lot of the more radical Muslims shun them, or, and many times they even might even persecute them, but they shun them for one main reason. The Sufis are very universalistic. They are very open to anyone who has a mystical belief system. So if you came out of Christianity and you considered yourself very mystical and you practiced mysticism, they would be very, very accepting of you. Just as if you were uh, a Buddhist and you practice Zen Buddhism, they would be very accepting of you. They're very universalistic, which is what puts them at odds with uh, uh, the more radical uh, Quranic uh, uh, Muslim. You know, uh, those that are that are um, what would be considered the uh, The Shia and the Sunni and, and those type of people, or even just, you know, your, your more religious, you know, even though they're not, they may not be radical uh, Muslims, they, they, uh, they're devout Muslims. And so they're, they're, the Sufis are not readily uh, accepted by uh, the majority of people in uh, the Islamic faith. So I, I failed to mention that, and I thought it was really, really important because of another topic that I have done quite a bit of research on, and it has just it is completely invading the United States, not just within Christianity and Christendom, but in within the world of politics and society, and that's Chrislam. And I call it a hybrid because there is no way 
that Christianity and Islam can ever, ever be amalgamated. It's an impossibility for one main reason. On the Dome of the Rock, written in Arabic, it says Allah has no son. And within the Quran, there are several surahs that t tell you that, that Allah has no son. And uh, so if, if, if you say Allah has no son, then the Jesus that is spoken of and promoted by Islam and the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. It's impossible. So there is no such thing as Chrislam, although you have this, this uh, uh, movement uh, based on interfaith dialogue or, uh, or, or just ecumenism and universalism that are saying, well, you know, it's the best way to get along with everybody. Let's, let's create this hybrid. Well, what we're going to, what we're going to get to, and I'm going to reteach this because I've already taught it on podcasts before and, and, uh, and I, I don't, I don't mind reteaching because I love to teach so much, but, uh, I will reteach this on our YouTube channel because I think it is very, very important because of its infiltration. And you will find out that, uh, that Chris Long really began in Nigeria and it has infiltrated America. Not only has it infiltrated America, but it's infiltrated Christendom. So that's one of the, that's one of the very, very, I think just a topic that is just, just necessary to learn about today. You have got to be aware about what's taking place with uh, 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 imams being um, um, invited to come and speak at Christian churches. When my question is, and I even tweeted this out, when are we going to hear about an imam inviting a pastor or preacher to speak in their mosque? Well, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. That will never happen. Now, do they invite people to Ramadan dinners and and all that kind of stuff? Yes, yeah. You know, I, I I know, uh, and we will go into greater detail. I know people. I know groups, church groups that have participated in 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 meals at mosques, and that they even observe Ramadan. I can name you uh, uh, right off the top of my head right now. Two leaders. Brian McLaren and Rick Warren, who have observed Ramadan. So we're gonna we're gonna discuss this Chrislam hybrid. And then because of that, that brought to mind when I was thinking about all the things that I had forgotten to mention, it brought to mind something else that I, I have mentioned to people over and over, uh, not just in person, but on social media, and they have very few people have ever been made aware of something called spiritual renewal weekends or experiential weekends. Well, I was introduced to it as a uh, a born and raised Catholic, and it was called Curcio or Decalades. And they were called, they're called silent retreats or spiritual renewal retreats or experiential retreats. Uh, uh, it has a lot to do with uh, the mystical and experiencing God and um, uh, about uh, emotional highs and lows, which are all manipulated, by the way. I'll go into uh, 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 the even the manual. God providentially allowed me to put my get my hands on one of the manuals that is generally under lock and key. And that was God's providence that it was right about the time that I was researching uh, the spiritual renewal weekends under uh, under uh, Faith Walk, which is the Baptist version, which is just a uh, uh, it's just a, a Roman Catholic Curcio with a Baptist name. That's all it is. And what they do is they take out the 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 well known the well known uh, language of the Catholic Christia and they replace it with Baptist words and phrases and then you have uh, you have walk to Emmaus and you have uh, Acts and and there's just a multitude of them just every denomination now has an experiential weekend and I'm just shocked that. No, there's so so many people that have not uh, heard of it, or 
if they have heard of it, they don't know anything about it. Now, the reason why most people don't know anything about experiential weekends is because if you go, and they will deny this, but I can tell you through the manual that I read, uh, they will tell you that you cannot share anything other than it's wonderful and you need to attend. You are not, it's very cultic. Now, I didn't say it was a cult. I said it's cultic. And so a lot of it is not discussed. So that's why a lot of people have no idea what spiritual renewal weekends are because you are told if you attend it, you are not to share anything about it with anyone. All you say is if you want to know about it, you have to go. You have to go to a spiritual renewal weekend. So that's one of the reasons why most people either have never heard of them or if they've heard of them, they don't know anything about them. Well, guess what? I did all the research for you. And what I like to tell people is if it seems so bizarre and you're thinking there's no way that's true, that's when I say, please do your own due diligence. Be a Berean. Check me out. I, I love it when people say, I looked up so-and-so or such-and-such, and I found out so much stuff that, that you had said was true, and then I found out a few other things, and they share it with me, and I love it. You know, so feel free to do that. So we're going to talk. We're going to talk. That's one of the things we're going to dis we're going to discuss. We're going to have uh, lengthy YouTube videos covering many, many, many different topics. Now, let me get to a few scriptures. Uh, the first scripture, uh, as discerning the drift, really was birthed in my heart uh, over 28 years ago, almost three decades, and I have been preparing. Uh, just through uh, diligence, and and I don't, you know, I don't tell. I tell people, please don't feel sorry for me when I tell you about all of the research I did because I loved every minute of it. It was not a drudgery. It was not difficult. It was not painful. I loved every minute of the digging and the researching and the because I'm more of a a research analyst. That's what I would label myself is a research analyst. And so I always tell people, please don't, when I share with you about all of the long hours and the and, and the painstaking research and digging, and, and you have to remember, friends, I started doing this way before the internet was really, really popular. So I had to do a lot of reading, which again, I love to read. So it was not like it was a, a difficult thing for me, for me to do. So the, the, the culmination of almost 30 years of research and investigation, and I have just this, this plethora of, of handwritten pages and, and books that are dog-eared and, and, and marked up and highlighted, and, and uh, I had all of that ready to go. And for the longest time, I had no idea why. And then shortly, shortly after, it was just, you know, perfect timing, of course. You know, God, if, if you try, if I would have tried to orchestrate all this, it would have fallen apart. But God, in his perfect timing, because his timing is perfect, brought it all together. And we, we all had this aha moment. This is why we have all been studying and researching, because I wasn't the only one that was doing that. Though I had other friends and acquaintances that were doing the same thing at the same time that I was doing it, and the Lord brought us all together in His perfect timing. And that it would take me a very lengthy period of time to explain to you about all of, of the providential things that God orchestrated to bring us to the place where we are today. So I am all about Sometimes you don't know why God has just impressed upon you. You need to do something. You need to uh, to go with this 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 passion to know biblical truth, and then to also study what's masquerading as biblical truth. I had no idea 
that this is where it was going to take us to today, to what's going on right now. But the good thing is we were ready. So discerning the drift was birthed in my heart a long time ago before it was even discerning the drift. I had no idea it was going to be called discerning the drift. And as I studied God's word, I, I, I just felt more and more that what I was doing was truly uh, of God. It was Holy Spirit driven. And, uh, and I always make this disclaimer, you know, I, I didn't go hide away in the mountains somewhere and completely forget my family. No, I, I took care of, I worked uh, for 20 years in the public school system with wonderful special needs kids. I took care of two mothers, I, my mother and my mother-in-law. But in the all my spare time, all my spare time, thank, thankfully my husband understood I spent doing this, this research. So as I studied biblical truth, the more it highlighted what I and others, I came to know others, were also seeing as a contradiction of biblical truth. So once uh, Discerning the Drift really was titled Discerning the Drift, I recalled uh, the book of Hebrews. And in fact, that's what I'm studying right now in my in my quiet time is I'm studying the book of Hebrews again. And I remembered Hebrews 2.1, where it says, for this reason, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. From it what? what? What is the it? The it. Drift away from the gospel, the biblical truth that had been laid down by Jesus Christ and the apostles. The writer of Hebrews was, was basically telling, because the he Hebrews is written to Hebrew Christians, that they needed to be careful not to drift back in, into Judaism. Uh, you know, that's fully understood. That he was telling them that they needed to remain faithful and steadfast in the gospel, the teachings of Jesus Christ and the apostles. It's basically what it was. So this just came to mind as all of this, you know, since 2016, 2017, all uh, started, started developing along the way. And of course, uh, you have other scriptures that will be very familiar to you, and they're used by many other uh, ministries that are like us, or contending for the faith, and not just contending for the faith, but they are exposing what's masquerading as the faith. Uh, of course, 1 Timothy 4.16 is one of our favorites where it says, Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save yourself and your hearers. And this is not talking about uh, salvation. It's talking about saving people from drifting away from solid biblical doctrine. And so we have many scriptures in the Bible that tells us that not only are we to contend for the faith, but we are to also be aware of what is um, pretending to be of the faith. You know, you have many people who will say, he'll say, well, um, you know, what makes you feel like you should be calling people out? Well, it's not just me. Everybody is supposed to be calling people out, or not just discerning the drift. As a biblical believer, you can't just pick and choose the scriptures that you want to adhere to. You, If, if scripture tells you that you have to be careful of your doctrine, then we have to do that. And it, it also says that you are to beware of wolves and sheep's sheep's clothing, and you were to beware of those who were teaching falsely, and so on and so forth. So, what are we to do with that? We are to um, 
adhere to them, just like we do any other scripture. So if I, I personally believe that if I am made aware through my studies and my research of God's word and in uh, uh, teachings that profess to be God's word, but they're really not, or uh, teachers who profess to be teaching uh, something that's of God and it's not, and I, I'm, I am made aware of that, I become aware of that, I'm held accountable by the Lord for saying something. Now, am, am I held accountable to, to, make, to make people believe what I'm telling them, to accept the warning that I'm giving them? No. I'm only held accountable for sharing the warning with you, with, with others. I'm not accountable for their response. So here, this is where discerning the drift is. We're very, very careful. You know, we, we don't, I don't debate people. I don't get in arguments with people because uh, it's, it's, you get nowhere. You get nowhere. But if someone has a, 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 a genuine desire to know biblical truth and to know the counterfeit that's taking place, because they don't want to be deceived or they feel like they have been deceived and they want to come back to solid the solid fundamentals of the faith, the absolutes of Scripture, the all-sufficiency of Scripture, then I will be more than happy to help them out. But I do not, I will not argue with people because if you have someone who just wants to argue with you, they're not ready to hear the truth. And the only way that they're going to be ready to hear the truth is if they free willingly allow themselves to realize by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, if they're genuinely saved, that what they're believing is a lie. So discerning the drift, as well as last hour Bereans, the Berean Call, Lighthouse Trails, there are many, uh, unfortunately not enough, uh, let me say several. Uh, there are several excellent discerning uh, discernment ministries that uh, are doing just great work for the Lord. And they are really exposing things that uh, make them not very popular. But we don't care. We are, you know, uh, discerning the drift is uh, we are very, we are dispensational. We are uh, pre-tribulation. Uh, we, um, we, we believe that, um, that the rapture will take place. And it's the next event. Uh, nothing else needs to happen for the rapture to happen. But we are, uh, we are pre-trib. We're a pre-trib uh, ministry. And uh, it's not something that we would... Uh, we would choose to uh, to break a friendship over, but it is it is a belief that we are um, not moved in. We are not. We believe that Israel and the church are two separate groups of individuals. We we are we are not replacement theology uh, individuals. We believe that uh, Israel is maybe what you could maybe say on the back burner for the moment during this church age. So there, there's a lot of things that, that we, uh, we believe and we will not be moved. But the most poor, important thing is the biblical truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ plus nothing. It's once and for all. His sacrifice is not continuing. You know, uh, you don't add anything to it. You don't subtract anything uh, from it. It is com complete. It is finished. So we have certain things that we will not be moved by. And once we got that established, then we felt compelled that we needed to expose teachings that were being brought into the church that were masquerading as, as biblical Christianity. And uh, a lot of it has to do with, with uh, 
the, the, the mega church movement, seeker sensitive, purpose driven, emergent, postmodernism, social justice. Now you have the white privilege stuff. Now you got the Me Too movement. And much of what's going on in the world today has infiltrated the church. You have the radical feminist movement that's leading it's it's that's uh, leading the way into the sacred feminine, and uh, there are there are a multiplicity of things that's invading the church right now. There's leaven everywhere, and uh, we are hoping to be used of God to expose some of that, and. Um, we pray most of all that you would give us the opportunity to share with you what we have discovered, what we have uncovered, and then you can decide whether you will accept or reject that because there's nothing we can do to convince you. If you are biblically saved, God's word is the plumb line. In anything that contradicts God's word, I don't care how minor it is, is not of God. So we we use God's word as the plumb line. And then we share with you what is being promoted as being Christian or of God when in... Uh, in truth, not only is it unbiblical, but much of it is anti-biblical. So we're hoping that you will allow us to be um, a blessing to you uh, and an encouragement uh, more than anything else. Now, let me read just a couple of more uh, scripture verses that uh, have meant a lot to us and I'm sure it's to other people. Uh, of Ephesians 4, 14 and 15. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by wa waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, the trickery of men by craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. Now, we, we sincerely desire to speak the truth in love. And then at 1 John 4, 1 through 3 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. That's very telling. I have that underlined because a lot of what's a lot of people within Christianity today are now questioning whether Jesus was even God, whether he was God incarnate, whether he uh, resurrected physically. Many of them today say that Jesus just resurrected spiritually. And we know, of course, uh, that contradicts Scripture. Uh, let me continue reading. He says, in every, Scripture says, this is 1 John 4, 1 through 3, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus does confess Jesus as what? As come in the flesh, is not from God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist. Then in Titus 1, 1, 10, and 11, for there are many rebellious men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Of course, they're talking about uh, 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 Jewish uh, Christians there, who must be silenced because they are upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. For the sake of sordid gain. Does that ring a bell to you today? Sure. It really does. Titus 1.13, for this cause, reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith. Not sound in faith. Sound in the faith. See, because even that's twisted. You have today people that are teaching, teaching that uh, you have to have faith. Well, they, what they don't tell you is you have to, they're teaching you have to have faith in your faith. Because it, your faith is what manifests what you want. So it's not the, the object of your faith is not God. The object of your faith is self. Is believing that you can manifest with your words. So you're having faith in your faith. Not faith in God, who is, should be the object of your faith. So there's just so many twists and turns that are taking place that if you don't know what the enemy is saying and doing and what 
what they mean behind even words and phrases that used to be biblically defined, which are no longer today, you will be caught unawares and you will be swayed by every wind of doctrine and you will be led astray. You will be caused to drift. So that's why it's important that not only you know what God's word says, but you also have to know from the perspective of those who are uh, professing to speak truth, biblical truth, and they're really not. You have to know what they believe, what they're saying, what is the definition of the word and the phrase that they're using. Faith has been redefined. Church has been redefined. Missions and missionaries has been redefined. Christian, the word Christian has been redefined. See, I, I, I tend to, I hesitate to even use the word Christian today. Sometimes I just say I'm a biblical believer. You know, that, that's kind of, that kind of sets it for me. I'm a biblical believer because today Christian, even Christian's been redefined. So we have to know not only what God's word says, but we have to know what the people who are teaching and writing, the authors and who are speaking, what do they mean when they say this word or this phrase? Because there has been a complete redefinition of the vocabulary of Christendom today in America. Now, I have this uh, uh, quote by Vance Havner, who uh, uh, he lives from 1901 to 1986. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him. And he said the following, The devil is not fighting religion. He is much too smart for that. He is producing a counterfeit Christianity. So much like the real one that good Christians are afraid to speak out against it. And then he says another quote here. I am more afraid of a false revival than of no revival. A false revival with a false gospel, false evangelists, false converts, false joy. It would seem so genuine that it would deceive if possible, the very elect. Many church leaders will endorse it. Other good people will be afraid to oppose it for fear that they might be fighting against God. Now, how do we know what we should be opposing? You, you go to the word. You know, the, you go to the old, the old analogy where it said, you know, the people uh, uh, years ago, people that, that worked in banks, they were trained to feel authentic um, dollar bills. That way, when they would touch that, that tangible feeling that was recognized of the genuine, they would recognize the counterfeit. It's the same thing with Scripture. Again, you don't have to be a theologian. I'm not a theologian. But you have to know biblical truth. You have to know who God, God is. You have to know who he is. You have to know his attributes. You have to know who Jesus Christ is. What, he, what he's always been, pre-existent. You know, there's people that believe that Jesus was not pre-existent. Which would make him... Them teaching he was not a member of the Trinity. You have to know that. You have to know who Holy Spirit is. You have to know how they work together as the, as the triune Godhead. You have to know how they work independently of each other. Holy Spirit points to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ points to Heavenly Father. So you have to know, you have to know what the gospel, the biblical gospel is. You have to know the genuine so that you can know the counterfeit. 
that just goes without saying. So it's very important that even though we may not be theologians, we need to know biblical truth to the degree that if we heard some concept that was not biblical or it was very subtly not biblical or if it was a contradiction that we would have a cause for pause we would have a red flag it's very important that we do that you need to find good solid bible preaching teaching theologians I have people that I depend on. I have depended on them for over three decades. They have not let me down thus far. Many of them have already gone home to be with the Lord. Um, and I'm just grateful that we still have their resources. But it's very important that we know the genuine so that we can recognize, right, recognize the counterfeit. Now, how, how else do you recognize the counterfeit? You recognize the counterfeit by many times uh, it's not what they say, but it's what they don't say. That's important. That's what sent me on this over three year, thir uh, 30 decade, three decade, pardon me, three decade uh, tangent. This uh, over 30 years worth is because of what I was not hearing. Not so much what I was hearing, because what I was hearing was kind of benign. It wasn't necessarily unbiblical, but it was not complete. So what happened was, is, is you listen, not just for what's being said, but what's being not said, what's being left out. And that was my very first exposure to false doctrine, was, was people preaching, teaching, writing, in a very incomplete way. They were leaving out sin, sinners, the blood, the cross, the purpose for the cross. Who God, who, who God is, who God was, who God is, all of his attributes. They would talk about God as love, but they wouldn't talk about any, any other attributes of God. That's leaving something out. They would talk about Jesus, but they would never talk about him as the sacrifice, the, the, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world on the cross. They would never talk, talk about him. They would talk about him pre-Calvary, uh, and they would talk about him post-Calvary. But they would never talk about what he did for us on the cross. So that was my first exposure to counterfeit Christianity was what it was not being said, what was being left out. So you have to put all of this together and, and, and make that your focus. Biblical truth, genuine biblical truth, rooted in the absolutes of God's word, all sufficient, final authority. And then you have to avail yourself to learning a little of what you don't have to become an expert, but you need to know a little of what these people that are causing concern for you, what exactly are they saying? What are they meaning when they sound Christian, but you have reservations about them? So our desire is, uh, is that if you don't want to do all the homework, if you don't want to do all the research and all the studying, we hope that you will allow us to do that. For you now, always, always, always check us out because we are we are fallible. You know, there's times I might misspeak, and I might say something I meant to say the opposite of, or or I might have a misunderstanding of something. So we are not beyond reproach, but we we do do our best to uh, give credible evidence to what we are um, exposing and the people that we talk about. Now, one of the things that people say, well, you know, well, you, you don't, why are you exposing these people publicly? Well, first of all, it's just logic uh, and common sense that if you, if someone is going to teach something unbiblical publicly, 
that if you were to go to them privately and call them out on it and never expose them publicly, then the people that they deceived publicly would never know that what they were teaching was wrong. So if, if you or anyone, if I say something publicly, then I'm fair game. You can call me out publicly because there's no confidences that have been, that have been broken. Again, if something is taught publicly and it is not biblical or it's contrary to scripture or it is counterfeit, it sounds biblical, but it's really not. We are not doing any service to anyone who has been publicly taught by not publicly refuting it or being having it called out publicly. It wouldn't do any good. It makes no sense. You know, if it was a private conversation, then you go to them privately. So it has to be exposed publicly because those people are the ones that are uh, receiving what we have been questioning. So that just doesn't hold any water. Uh, we have, we have, you know, we just have uh, several people. I could do several programs just talking about, you know, these these uh, people that 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 really are uh, questioning ministries like ours. You know, the word is full of, of scriptures that tell us what we need to do. And that's what we're doing. And uh, our heart's desire is to be wholly, fully rooted and obedient to the Lord. We do not desire the praises of men. We do not care that if the world applauds us, there's no need for that. You know, we have an audience of one. Uh, our desire is to do God's will and God's will alone. We stand uncompromisingly, unapologetically on biblical truth. And if anybody, I don't care who it is, over the years, friends, I have had people that I admired over the years. You know, I may not have promoted mm -hmm. them. I may not have uh, uh, quoted them very much or, or at all. But I admired them from a distance. Well, I had to... Uh, I had to... Um, honestly had to stop uh, admiring them from a distance because they did or said something and I thought well that's not biblical at all they promoted someone who was very unbiblical they put them on their platform they promoted their 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 paganistic mystical abomination and so from that point on even though I may not have been uh, a, a big uh, supporter of theirs Whenever somebody would mention this person's name or that person's name, I would have to say, well, uh, since you brought them up, I'm going to share with you my concern about them. And a lot of people are shocked. And many times, you know, they might even say that uh, we're not very nice for doing so. But the evidence is there. So we can't be a respecter of persons. We can't say, you know, we're, we, we've been supporting this person or we admired this person for, for decades and, and overlook the fact that they are um, drifting. We have to call them out too. So just as I would expect someone would do for me if I was going off course, I would, I would, I would welcome that and I'd appreciate that. And hopefully I would have a very teachable spirit because if, if you desire to be in whole, in complete obedience to the Lord, you're not going to have a problem with somebody coming to you and saying, you know, our, our, I, you know, I, you taught this and I just have a real problem with that. And, and let's look at this together and maybe we could, you know, maybe I misunderstood what you meant or what you said or something like that. And that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that because you end up, both of us, you know, iron sharpening iron, you end up both growing from that. But I will, uh, you will see that I and the, the people who are discerning the drift are, are very, very careful about uh, having good resources. We, uh, we, we quote a lot directly uh, and uh, because that way we can't ever have anybody say, that um, we are bringing 
an accusation against someone for 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 teaching something that's uh, unbiblical uh, without evidence. It's very important for us to do that. Uh, and I, I believe as a research analyst, you just do your best to, to make sure that uh, you have um, a, a lot of research at, at the ready so that you can uh, prove that what you are sharing is indeed uh, fact and it is indeed a, uh, a concern. So it's very important uh, that we be objective. And of course, as we go on on each topic, we will we will uh, share some scripture that is applicable, and we will explain why that scripture is useful for the support of us exposing uh, this or that teaching that uh, is contrary to uh, God's word. So uh, we will we we tend to to use scripture as time goes on, depend in, in, in each topic that we uh, we teach on and that we uh, we share um, the the concerns and the the red flags and the the uh, the the errors that we can see um, that are not just contrary but. Uh, Anti, anti biblical many of them are so we're gonna we're gonna continue to, sh to, to share um, scripture verses as we go along and talk about the contextual understanding of those scripture verses and why uh, they're important and why it illumines uh, the, the the worries that we had with uh, with certain um, teachings and uh, movements within Christendom. Once again, I thank you for joining us today. Uh, I pray that you uh, take the time to uh, join us periodically as I begin my uh, series of uh, topical teachings, uh, exposing the deception and the masquerading of uh, false Christianity into the church. Uh, and um, we pray most of all that we would be a blessing to you and uh, that you would uh, walk away with having uh, not only learned something of biblical truth, but of uh, the deception, the dangerous deception that's out there. And um, you would be um, better prepared to um, address those deceptions as you are confronted th with them uh, in your daily life. So until the next program with uh, Discerning the Drift YouTube channel, we thank you for joining us and we pray most of all that you would have an incredibly blessed day.